Well, hello, hello, hello. We're so excited that you are with us um, on tonight. Hell, here my mama, mother's on. I am D. Leonard Hughes, uh, President and CEO of D. Leonard Hughes Personal Development Institute and this show here. Um, this is not a church or religious platform. This is personal development, but Christ awareness, I like to put that in. So glad you've joined us tonight. We've got some good information. We're going to go in your head so you can get in your life. Can I say that again? We're going to get in your head so you can you can understand your life. What usually happens, we try to solve outward problems with outward solutions. And it's very important that we go within um, to deal with solutions, to deal with what we think um, is a problem. Most of the time, it's not a problem. It's just our perception or we don't want to let go. Let me say that. We don't want to let go. And so we're pulling. We're saying, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I got a problem. I got a problem. And it's just a simple inward release of letting go. And once you can let go, you can move on. And I know letting go, um, let me get my notes here. Letting go is not easy, but you have to make up in your mind that I'm going in my head in order to get in my life. You can't get into your life when you haven't gone in your head. Let me say it again. You can't get into your life until you get here. Once you go in here, then what you you can everything else you know what you can't control. Uh, you understand that you know sometimes things doesn't go the way that you expect them to go, but you move on. Let's start with this here. Um, let's unpack this. What causes intrusive thoughts? While it completely while it is completely normal to experience intrusive thoughts from time to time, every individual. Every individual that's human deals with some way, some form, intrusive thoughts. Again, we're going to get in your head so you can get in your life. You're trying to get all in your life and fix your life. and stra Hey, Sheila, you're trying to straighten this side of your life. Mm -mm. That's why today we're going to go in your, get in your head so you can get in your life. Um. So everybody have intrusive thoughts. The underlying problem with them occurs when we continue to uh, worry about them. So it comes as no surprise that intrusive thoughts are associated with OCD, obsess obsessive compulsive disorder. What are you saying, D.L. Hughes? Intrusive thoughts just is like a car. It's just... Thought, first of all, thoughts are like, are like clouds. They come and they go. You can't stop a thought from coming. Nobody can stop a thought from coming. Uh, it's going to come. But it's how you handle We're going to get into it. We're going to pack some things. How you handle that intrusive thought. Uh, intrusive thoughts can make you feel like this make you feel like that you're thinking something that you know that's not that you know that's not you you know let's let's be honest intrusive thoughts could be you're riding in the car somebody cuts in front of you that intrusive thoughts say go stop them and pull them out the car that's what i mean about intrusive thoughts and things that your mind because first of all the mind wants to do its own thing. And I, I was talking to somebody today and I was I was sharing that the mind was not made to lead you, but the mind was made for you to be the leader through the Christ mind. Again, we're going to get in your head tonight in order to get in your life because you're dealing with everything that's going on around you. You're dealing with, and see, then what you're doing you're trying to fix other folks' problems. They're not trying to fix their problems themselves. They're not trying to fix this stuff. You know, why are you wasting time, wasting energy about this one, about that love one, about this? When people are ready to get it together, you will 
No, there will be a transformation of personal development. If people are ready, you would know. So you don't waste your energy. You don't waste your time um, dealing. And see, when you start dealing with thoughts, people don't want that. They're looking for you to give them something, give them a quick fix. But it all starts, you got to get in your head in order to get in your life. While intrusive, uh, hey, Tanisha, while intrusive thoughts can be random, a person's own life experience or reaction to an event typically influences them. For example, someone may see a report on their local news station about a burglary. The report can subconsciously cause obsessive thoughts and a burglar may break into you know, intrusive thoughts come in various forms. But some of the most, I'm going to share some, we're going to unpack some other areas that you have intrusive thoughts. We as a people have not been taught how to think and how to, because you can have crazy stuff. I'm just not, not saying you're crazy. But let me say this, you can have uncomfortable thoughts coming in your head and you're trying to figure out, where's this coming from? That's not me. That's the first recognition that you must make when a thought, they come. I don't care who you are, what religion you are, what color you are. Intrusive thoughts hit our minds that we have 60,000 thoughts per day. There's different figures, but nobody really knows, but they say there's 60 thoughts per day. So in those thoughts, of thoughts that come that you don't like. It makes you feel uncomfortable. It, it, it's, it's almost like you're fighting your own self. And you're wondering, what do I do? And your mind will tell you, oh, you're crazy. Not true. Not true. Not true. Number one, I hope y'all with me tonight. Don't suppress the thought. You all have gone through some stuff that you have not let go and you didn't want to face it. So what you did, you just, you suppressed it. Traumatic situations, things that happened, a bad divorce, you're still trying to figure out why did he leave? I mean, that's been 10 years ago. Let it go, let it go. So we find ourselves suppressing thoughts, intrusive thoughts, we suppress them because we never was taught what to do with them. You know, if you're not taught what to do with suppressed in, intrusive thoughts, then that's, that's it. And people, let me say this, people in religion, mainline religion, have never, ever been taught about their thinking. They're looking for a word, nothing wrong with that. But after you get that, you've got to go in your head in order to get into your life. So for many people, the first reaction they have when faced with an intrusive thought is to try to forget about it. Not going to happen. Um, when in the Bible, there's a scripture that says, um, forgetting those things. I should have put that in my, as one of my um, textual scriptures. Um, forgetting those things, otherwise letting go. When Paul said forget, he doesn't mean forget the way we interpret it, forget. It's really saying, let go. Let go of things behind you and press. Because you know, I know that you can't forget it. Two things in life you don't forget. That's the hand that feeds you and the foot that kicks you. Can I say it again? Two things in life you won't forget. The hand that feeds you and the foot that kicks you. Unfortunately, this method causes in the exact opposite effect, when you're trying to forget it, you end up thinking about the intrusive thought even more. If you don't believe me, you've been doing it. Because you don't, you're suppressing the thought. You got to get in your head in order to get in your life. Doesn't mean you're crazy. Doesn't mean you're off. Sometimes you need therapy. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm a, I'm a Christian psychologist. I have clients. That are good. They're not crazy. But it just, they need to sort through things and they need instructions and tools how to sort through things you've been through, things from your childhood. There's another, <coughs> excuse me, there's another lecturing I'm going to do 
entitled the inner child because there's an inner child within all of us that have never grown up. And this is why emotionally thinking, rejection, this and that about people, people, you're shy because you got an inner child. I'm going to have to do a lecture on that. You have an inner child that have never grown up. Things that you didn't get when you was a child, you're still carrying that. Misunderstanding. Maybe your parents didn't treat you like they treated the other kids. Let it go. It's because you are unique. Doesn't mean someone's wrong. Sometimes I, I, sometime I don't believe that the spirit allows certain people to approve of us or sanction us. And many times it's the ones that we want it from. But there has to be a point. I said something on Facebook. I mean, I remember exactly what I said. But I said, step away from your friends, supposed to be friends. If they don't notice, you keep going. You keep going. A psychology professor at Harvard University demonstrated this. I like this concept. He asked participants in the study not to think about not to think about white bears for five minutes. And guess what happened? The participant thought about white bears more than one minute, um, one minute on the average. Those thoughts are going to keep coming. But you haven't been taught. So what you do is suppress it. Emotional situation to come. What you do, you just, you keep suppressing stuff. And when you keep suppressing thoughts, emotions, you see, you find yourself, you're miserable because all those, the more you suppress it, first of all, you can't suppress it. You think you can. And the more you suppress those enthusive, in, enthusive thoughts, the stronger they get. Because the mind has three things, fight, flight, I forgot, fight, flight, or freeze. Whenever there's a traumatic situation, your mind's going to tell you fight, flight, or freeze, one of the three. Either you're just going to freeze and not do nothing, or you're going to take off, or you're going you're gonna to deal with it. You got stuff in life, and I know, I know there's challenges. There's challenges that come. Everybody should be taught about your thinking and about your mindset. You can't get anywhere if your mindset is not right. You can, you can pray, you can do all that. You're not going anywhere. What do you mean, Dr. Hughes? When those in the Bible, when those spies, when the ones went and say, in our own eyes, they're like giants. There's some stuff that you're facing is not reality. A lot of stuff you're dealing with, it's not a real reality. It may be a fact, but it's not a reality. Certain perceptions you have about life, about people. That's why you get on the point of just minding your own business, not thinking about what this one's doing, because you can think it's a waste of time. You don't know what they're doing. You may assume what they're doing. <laughs> And you all into them and they go going on. You're trying to figure stuff out for them. People have to figure out stuff for themselves. You make it help them. But there's stuff they have to figure out on their own. Okay? Instead of consciously suppressing your, th your thoughts, try to divert your attention away from it with an engagement. When that thought comes, that intrusive thought comes, you switch to something else. You start laughing. You start thinking about something else, get an image of something, think about being on a Ferris wheel uh, or whatever. When that intrusive thoughts come, because you can't stop thoughts from coming. There's another lecture I'm going to do and talk about sticky minds. How thoughts just stick to your mind. And it make you seem you're crazy. This thought is going to be there for the rest of your life. You know, you suicide. All these things you go, and it's not you. Your thoughts are not you. Can I say it again? And your thoughts and all of your thoughts are not reality. You got to know how to separate the Christ mind from the old mind. Now, there's a resistance that's going to take place. 
but you have to go on the road. I'm going to do it. I practice this when intrusive thoughts come. I'm learning how to just shift it to something else. And you keep doing that after a while, it's like a cloud. It leaves. Now, will it come back? I'm not going to tell you it's not. But you built yourself to know that that's not you. Every thought, let me say this here, and every thought is not you. Now, this type of teaching, some folks not going to understand because they don't want to go in their head. They want to deal with everything out here and deal with this person and, you know, pray for this one and pray for that one. The person you're saying pray for, what are they doing for themselves? The spirit respects somebody's will. If their will to do this or will to do that, but instead of you running around trying to get all of that, you know, whatever you call it, see what they're doing. See what they're doing. Deal with people that's ready. I can't, I don't have time to deal with people that's not ready. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond that now. You got to have a ready mind. Oh, this is, this is fantastic. So I said, don't suppress your thoughts. Instead of constantly suppressing your thoughts, I said that already. For example, try completing a cross, do a crossword puzzle, read a book. And here it is, recognize the difference between thought and reality. There are some things that's going on. Hey, grandson, there's things that's going on. And you know when the intrusive thoughts really come many times? At night, when you lay your head on the pillar, you cut the light off, here they come. And before you know it, you're tossing and you're turning. You, you, you finally get to sleep, but you don't rest because monkey mind, monkey brain is all over the place. It's like you're getting dressed and what? And, and automatically, instead of dealing uh, and, and letting go of those thoughts, what we do is switch to autopilot. It's not in my notes, but I like this. Instead of you getting behind the steering wheel and you drive your life through the Christ mind, you would rather get in the back seat. Come on. You'd rather get in the back seat and let somebody else drive you. You say, where are you going? I don't know. And you still in the car? Come on. You're going to have to get a hold of of things, you got to get the rings of your life by getting the rings of your mind. Once again, when, tonight, we're going to get in your head in order to get in your life. You can't solve the same problem with the same mindset. And prayer is not going to move every problem. And first, you people got to understand what real prayer is. You got to understand the authority, the authority that you have. So, don't suppress the thought. I don't know what thought it is, but while I'm talking, you know. And if you don't know, you need to be aware. So I don't worry about it. I'm just going to stay on autopilot, whatever it is, it is, it is, what is it, shari, 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 whatever it is. I'm just going to, I'm just going to stay on autopilot. I'm just live my life on autopilot. Really? You're not living a life. You're struggling with a life. You're working, but you're not going to get anywhere. Because you thought getting a job is going to make you wealthy. Getting a job doesn't make you wealthy. Having multiple streams of income puts you on the road. And see, if not, if you don't create wealth in your life, you find yourself waiting and hoping to catch the lottery. If I can catch whatever, I don't know whether, man, I'm not saying you don't, you don't do that. That's up to you. I can't see my money going like that. Um, but you're depending on an outside source to hit the lottery, and you don't know, you got trillions of dollars inside you. You got money-making ideas. You're frustrated, can't find a job. I told folks last week, you can sell candy apples. I love candy apples. And first part of this year, I just oh, wanted candy apple, candy apple. Couldn't find it. Went to the candy stores and, oh, no, we don't make that till um, fall. Went to Walmart. They didn't even have the tools to make them. I said, hmm. So what I started doing is making candy apples and giving them out, doing the test run, 
giving them out in the neighborhood. And when, you know what they said? Man, I've been wanting to kind of, I've been, this mind me when I was a little boy, this mind me. Hmm. So that's going to be in, 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 in just a few weeks, that's going to be a stream of income for me. I'm going, and then I went to a, my wife and I, my baby went to a outside function at a farm and, and people had booths, money, making money, making money. People had booths. And I look, and my wife and I, nobody, there's no candy out the booth. They got everything else. They got ice cream. They got this. They got barbecue. Folks were lined up. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I said, if I would have known about this outdoor, it was, you know, hundreds of people, up to thousands. I would have did a license to become a vendor. Man, I would have made at least a thousand candy apples. Five dollars a piece, five for 20. There ain't no such thing as you don't have money. That's no such thing. You can do something. If, if it's Uber, if it's uh, um, Lyft, you have to go in survival mode and don't sit in your house on your couch. You're not going to get anywhere and nothing's going to drop from the sky. And there's no house, a car, or a business, or a billion dollars that's going to drop in on your doorstep. It starts here. Wealth starts here. They taught us, and I'm glad my grandson on, they taught us, go to school, get a job, that's it. And you've been working. You've done that. But still, you, you're, not, you, you're just struggling. And I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to give you the key. If you do exactly what I say, you will see tremendous results. You got to get in your head, but you're afraid. Man, them intrusive thoughts can come and give you so much fear that you do this here. Oh, that thought is back. Oh, it's back. That thought is back. It's back. And you know what you're doing? Never entertain it. Never entertain it and never judge it. Let it pass. Because as long as you fear it, and go through the all of the oh that you mean nobody may not be around, but that thought is back. I'm not a Christian. Doesn't mean that your soul goes through a process of developing the Christ within. So intrusive thoughts, you can't suppress it. You can't be thinking, what can I do? Who can I go to to stop these thoughts? First of all, we live in what we call race consciousness, meaning it's like a sea with all kind of fish. That's how we are in the mental world. There's a lot of stuff. And sometimes, you know, it, it thoughts make their way to us because, yes, thoughts are trying to take root. Had it in my notes. Thoughts are trying to find a home. Oh, God, I like that. Thoughts are like, I don't know, ants, maybe that's not it. But thoughts are trying to find a brain of mind. That, that's what I mean, sticky brain, because that's the only way it, it, it energizes and it affects you. And there's a scripture that says casting down because the thought is the imagination. You got to understand how you made people say, why well, you always talk about the mind? You tell me what else it is. The Christ mind, your mind. How did you get to work this morning? Your mind. How did you know how to go home? When your eyes, it was your mind. Find somebody with dementia. They can't, they don't get home. Oh my God. Don't let thoughts rent in your head for free. Keep them going. You know, can I tell you one thing that I often say when intrusive thoughts may try to come and come? I say, I have the mind of Christ. I get off of that thought. And, I, and when I say I have the mind of Christ, there's a peace and there's a quietness in my mind. If you say, I close your eyes, I have the mind of Christ. This is how, hey, Kendra and others, I don't want to call everybody's names. I don't know who I was on. But this is how you deal with, see, again, intrusive thoughts. 
People are just dealing with stuff in their head. They're going about, they're working, they're doing this, but they got stuff in their head that's driving them mad. Again, tonight we want to get in your head in order to get in your life. You can't get in your, see, again, people are all in their life. They're all in everybody else's life. And not, they haven't even gone in their head. You know why? It's not your fault. It was school fault. School taught us other folks' philosophy. They didn't even teach real history. Come on, somebody. School taught us, get a job. That's it. They didn't teach us about money and investing. They didn't teach us about multiple streams of income. They, no, nobody really taught us how to think. And you got to be a thinker. But it takes information. You've got to have information up here in order to think. There's a scripture that says, and once again, I use it because that's the this is the Christ awareness practice for a matter of religious. But um, okay, you've got to understand that when you move into your, you, I know you're there. You've got some thoughts that's been intruding. And you're saying, Dr. Hughes, I've got to get rid of the Man, you may have a thought of slapping somebody. You may be riding in the car with your man or your boo. <laughs> and you look at him and something to say, just, just hit him. Come on. That's intrusive thought. I can go on. Sexual thoughts. And you're like, this thing, I ain't, uh -uh. I'm, I'm not that type of man. I'm not that type of woman. Why am I thinking these, these sexual thoughts? And you have to be careful with sexual thoughts. Again, don't suppress it. Don't let it stay. Begin to say something. Begin to get another image because words are images. When you say car, there's an image. You got me? So what you got to do is you, what you got to do is go within. And I often say, if you don't go within, you'll go without. Recognize the difference between thought and reality. Again, everything in your life is not a reality. What you're facing. I tell folks that say they've got, oh, I've got uh, this problem, that problem, that problem. And before you know, they're giving you 15 things. Well, I want you to pray. I said, let me talk to you. You got all this stuff going on. I say, sir, ma'am, that ain't normal. Huh? It's not normal. You may have two or three things you have to deal with, but a whole list. Somewhere you're not making decisions and somewhere you're not letting go. And again, you got to let go. When those thoughts come, let them go. I know it, it caused you to be afraid. It, it, it just, it gives you a chill. And you're trying to figure out how you can open your brain and get into your mind and get that thought out. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. What you have to do is separate yourself from those negative doubt, fear, unbelief, sexual, whatever, whatever intrusive thought. You've got to separate yourself from that thought. Don't grab it. Because if you grab it, if you try to fight it, all right, I'm going to go in my head. I'm going to fight this thought. thought. The thought going to win. You're not going to win. <laughs> because of the, that, the, whatever you fight, you give energy to. So what do I do? And again, you don't suppress it. You all got stuff that you have suppressed that you haven't talked to nobody. You know what I told somebody? I told somebody I was counseling my clients because I'm a personal development coach. And I help people. And those of you that anybody that need help or need therapy, um, get with me. And I'll let you know um, everything you need to do. But I told her she had so many things. This was last year. She had so many things going on. Oh, I'm this and I did this. And I told her, I said, hey, David, what you need to do is write a letter to yourself. You need to sit down and go from your child because what you're dealing with now is a response reaction to the experiences you've been through. What you, the way you see life, you see life through the experiences 
and the stuff and the people that you've had to deal with. And that's your perception of life based on your past experience. And you're limited. You're limited to that. I told her, write a letter to yourself. Put the put on it. Talk to you. Write a letter to you. Write a letter to you. Everything, all your fears, that intrusive thought, write a letter to yourself. You got to get, you got to, you're shouting and it's fine. You're going to church and it's fine. But until you go in here, you can't deal with out there. Because what's going with out there in your outward life is a result of what's going on here. And then letting go means you can't, some people can't let go because they want to keep control. And control is nothing but another fear. And you got to realize you can't control everything going on in your life. And for God's sake, you can't control people. Get on it, get in a rim. I've told somebody today, make up in your mind that I'm 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 gonna get into my head so I can get into my life. You'll never get what you want, get where you want without personal development. You've got in order to have personal development, you gotta like yourself, you gotta want more. You gotta you gotta want more. You can't be satisfied where you are. You got to want that life, that abundant life. You want to live. You want to be happy. And happiness doesn't mean, see, happiness doesn't, things doesn't make you happy. People, they may, you know, kind of, you know, you, you're having fun, but they can't make you happy. Only one person can make you, make you happy, and that's you. Let me tell you something. Getting into your head, and it wasn't even my title, but I like it. Get into your head and all. You say, well, how do I start? You start by listening to your thoughts and listen to your emotions and basing them upon scriptural stuff. Think on these things or positive stuff. You see, that's how it starts that you are, and, and you got to be aware that there's a greater mind within you and it's called the Christ mind. There's another mind in you. We've talked about that, but then it said Christ in you, and then you feel that I got to get my prayer to the sky. I got to get his attention. Hey, hey, it's me. It's Daryl. I didn't get no response. I'm going to get 10 more people. Hey. And God has said, what are you doing? I, when I left here, I transferred the power to create, the power to live, the power to be, the power to have. He transferred, excuse me, that authority to us. We're living defeated lives because we don't know who we are. I told folks, you have to understand how he dealt with folks in the Old Testament. But come the New Testament, you don't see a lot of interventions like that because Christ came to let us know the works that I do. I didn't come to stay, boys. It was 17 years. 17 years. I, I, I'm going to teach on that. The, the, I won't say the loss, but the missing years of Jesus. And I'm going to teach it. From 12 years old to, to 30, what happened? He was developing. Because he emptied himself. Come on, somebody. Victor, I feel this. He emptied himself of divinity in order to develop and show us that we can have what he breathed in Adam knows. It wasn't just breath. It was a spirit. It was a mindset. And we were made in the image and likeness of him. Oh, you got to let go intrusive thought. See, many folks have been just riding over. It is there. It keeps coming and it keeps coming. And you say, I'm just going to suppress it. I'm just going to suppress it. You can't suppress thoughts. You can't suppress them. You have to let them go. And again, when those intrusive thoughts come, it'll make you so fearful. You feel so bad. 
am I a bad person? Am I really whatever, you know, whatever you, because I've got people from all different lives on this uh, platform and this is a personal development platform. So I'm careful that I don't disturb, make, you know, interrupt anybody in, you know what I'm saying? Because I want people to personally develop. But those thoughts, I need some real people out there. They come, whoosh. They come like a car just pulling in, speeding in. You ever seen a car just pulling in the driveway? Woo! You're trying to figure out who's driving, who is that? That's how thoughts do. But you never knew. You thought that you were your thoughts. Your actual thought. Only thought, only thoughts you are is Christ's mind thoughts. That's you. Health, wealth, relationship with God, that's you. That's the real you. The head, not the tail, that's the real you. First, not last, that's the real you. Whatever you touch is blessed, that's the real you. That other, uh, there's a scripture said, putting off the old conversation of, of the old man or the old mind, because my man is nothing but mind clothed in flesh. So you got to put it away. You won't go where you want to go. God can't do anything for you without you having the right mindset. You got to have the right. I told you about those spies. They say in our own eyes, their own perception, that again, that was their reality. It wasn't the reality. The other spies said to themselves, we're well able to take the land. Two different, same picture, <laughs> excuse me, but two different perceptions of reality. So I said, we can't do it. Can't do it. They're giants. You can't see the thing. You can't look at the outward things that's going on and think that's the reality. That's not reality. And it passes. A lot of things in life, if you let go, it'll pass. But you you want to be in control. You feel if, I, if I'm not in control, something bad's going to happen. If I'm not in control, I don't feel like I handled the problem. You know what? <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> there's a teaching, <clears throat> Brother Victor. There's a teaching I want to do on critical thinking. Corporations, businesses, companies hire people that understand critical thinking, and they hire them to solve problems. And they got major billion, millions of dollars stuff to deal with, but they got to have a critical thinking group that goes after the problem. You've got to go after the problem. Um, there's a good book that says go for no. I don't care how many times you hear no. But see, for your old mind to tell you, well, God don't want you to have it. <clears throat> well, that's what somebody else can have it. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> you can't have that. Somebody else can be happy. You can't be happy though. Somebody else can get a new house, but not you. Why? Who told you you couldn't? Your mind told you that. Don't believe your mind. Don't believe all of your thinking and don't believe all of your feelings. <clears throat> you can't do it. Don't suppress the thought. Okay, recognize that. Thank you for those that are still with me. I know on Facebook, which is good. People come in, which is understand. Uh, many times they're looking for something else, you know. But I want to get in here in order to get in here. Because if not, your religious journey, whatever religion you are, if you don't go within, you're really missing. Can I say it again? You're really missing uh, the joy of living and the peace of living. Recognize the difference between thought and reality. A big concern for many people with intrusive thoughts is the fear they may act on a dark, intrusive thought. That's another thing I want to deal with. When those intrusive thoughts come, the fear is I may do it. You see your supervisor, man, I wish I could just get a hold up. She always running them out. <clears throat> 
that's an intrusive thought. But then the other side of it, you start thinking, <clears throat> excuse me, you start thinking, what if I do it? This intrusive, <clears throat> excuse me, this intrusive thought that keep coming, supposed I carry it out. Supposed I do it. Come on. There's a um, quote I put out a while back. Man was saying he had a lot of trouble in his life. And most of it never came to pass, meaning it's happening. What are you saying, Dr. Hughes? It's all happening in here. You've got to get, you got to get to the Christ mind, which is in you. We have the Christ mind. The Christ mind, can I tell you something? The Christ mind is the same mindset that was in creation. Because we're made from his image or his imagination. And he breathed, not in the mouth, but he wanted to get right to the brain. Because when you do CPR, first thing we do is go for the mouth. He didn't go for the mouth. He went here because he imparted. He imparted his abilities, his creation, and we missed it. They missed it. So the second Adam had to come. So what did he come for? He come to restore the kingdom. He come to take us back to how we're supposed to be in Genesis, that we have dominion, that we rule, that we reign, and whatever you want in your life, you call it. He told Adam, whatever it is, you call it. Are you calling stuff in? Or are you just begging and pleading and please God? You don't have to say please to God. David said, I've never seen, I don't know why I see people on Facebook, please God, do this. And I said, no understanding. Because David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg. This is a Christ awareness platform, not religious. Nor his seed beg for bread. So why are you begging God? Why are you pleading? God has a timing. Now, let me say this here. Let's say that you, you, you should like this, brother Victor. I'm saying Victor because that's my that's one of my good friends. Um, oh, okay, I'm gonna come up. <laughs> All right. Um, oh my god, okay. Um, you understand, you understand the fears. Everybody got fears. Uh, babies have the fear. We learn fear when we're a baby, the fear of falling, the fear of being dropped. And then it just keeps going on and we grow up. The inner child is still there. He said, I don't trust nobody. You can't be successful and not trust people. What happened? You all trust the people on the wrong level with the wrong mindset. You're getting counsel and advice from people that don't even have a Christ mind mindset. So, in order for you to get where you got to get, you just need the proper information and you need to apply the proper information. I said, I got a few more minutes. Thank you for staying with me. However, intrusive thoughts are what they suggest. They just thoughts. It's not a real person. Ain't nobody can put a gun to, thoughts can't put a gun to your head. Thoughts can't make you do nothing. It's just a thought. When a person goes out, and shoot somebody or this or whatever it may be. It wasn't a gun. It was a thought in the person behind the gun. And when the thought came, came they imagined themselves going because they was mad at somebody and they start them in and going and shoot them. It ain't money. There's nothing. You can put a million dollars on the table and it's going to stay right there till you come back. But it's the hands that's behind it. It's behind. Let me say this here. You must identify. Um, let me hold it. The thoughts are not a sign of what's to come. And there's no intent to act on them. No matter what your OCD or anxiety want you to believe. Let me say it again. These thoughts are not a sign of what's to come. Just because you have a thought doesn't mean that's going to happen. And you got to, that's what happens when you get all these thoughts and you don't deal with it and you suppress it. You got all these thoughts and you're thinking all this stuff is going to happen. This is going to happen. I had a thought, your child want to go outside and play, but you got all of these fears. 
and you're miserable. And sometimes people around you can be miserable because you're dealing with thoughts that are not real. Thoughts are like clouds. They come and they go, okay? With the mind, accept these thoughts as mere thoughts. And when they arise, let them pass freely through your mind. Let me say this, please hear me. When the thoughts come, don't fight them. Don't suppress them. Allow them to just flow in the past. You hate it? Here it is again. Here come that old mind. They taught us renewing the mind never taught us how. They never taught Oh, you got the Holy Ghost? You ain't gonna think like that. That's not true. Hey, Deshanda, that's not true. And then you gotta, have, you, you can't, it's not true. You have to work through things. You have to work, you have to work through things again. What am I talking about? You gotta get in your head before you get in your life. You're trying to deal with your life with the same mindset. You can't solve the same problem with the same mindset. You've got to become a creative thinker. You've got to have a creative mind. I'm going, I'm going to lecture on that because I love it. Being a creative thinker, a critical thinker, well, creative thinker too. You understand what I'm saying? With the mind, accept those, okay, recognize, but not allow them to consume you. By accepting intrusive thoughts as just another thought, you'll become less likely to worry about them over time. It's just a thought. And the thoughts are not you. Again, as we wind down, your thoughts, it's not you. Those old man thoughts, the old man or the old mind, we put off that. And now we have what? The Christ mind. Jesus Christ, Peter said, Jesus Christ lives in you. But you haven't, you don't know how to connect with him because you still, let me tell you something. For whatever, you know, I know in a Christian religion, you get born again, and they made us think that everything just changes. You become a new creature, but that's not all of a sudden. Well, your spirit becomes regenerated. But when you leave the altar of getting born again, you still go back with the same stuff in your head. When you shake the preacher's hand and you walking back to your seat, you walking back with the same stuff. Yes, you have been awakened by accepting Christ, but you have to work out things in your soul. And you're trying to figure out if, you know, I'm into my religion or, you know, I've um I become a Christian, but I'm still thinking this. I'm still feeling this. That's not you. This takes a lot. That's why I like being a mind hacker. Only 10% of people really get what they want to get because the 90% won't press through. They're not persistent enough. They, they, they can't, they can't, they can't see it through it. You know, I, I did something on my morning manner. How this man was, I mean, I remember it all. Um, he went to see the king, and I think the king told him, go home and come back, and you can have in the kingdom anything you want. Anything you want, you can have it. He went home and told his wife. And his wife said, Well, get on back there. He said, No, I'm going, I'm going to eat first. So he ate. Then after he ate, she said, Are you going? He said, No, I'm going to take a nap. He slept two hours. So when he finally left, he got tired and on the side of the road, he slept five hours. By the time he got to the gate of the king, the gate was closed and locked. What happened? He procrastinated. He had his priorities out of order and he missed it. He missed it. People sleep, 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 sleep. I know why you sleep. You're trying to outsleep those thoughts because you don't have to deal with them when you sleep. But can I tell you something? You deal with them in your dream world. And when you wake up, they're there. And tonight, my endeavor has been to get you in your head and get you in your life. That's my endeavor. 
you can you can do it. You can win. You can win the battle of your mind. But you got to be a fighter. You can't be nobody to lay down. When those thoughts come, don't fight them. Release them. Let them go and they're going to pass. You said when it keeps coming, you got to keep releasing them. Let them go. Because they're trying to find. Let me say this. Let me say this. The Bible said try the spirit by the spirit. Spirit has thoughts. Because you don't understand the spirit. You see what I'm saying? Um, and so I use this. Try thoughts by the thought, by the word of God. If that thought is not scriptural, is not positive, is not personal development, if it's not self-image, then you separate yourself from it. I'm just kind of going to recap of what I was saying. Every thought is not your thought. But that old man, you put him off, but he stays around. He's sinned. Any way that he can get in, any way that that old man, that old mind can get in. But you've got to be on a journey to develop the Christ mind. The same mind that God had. Woo! The same mind. The same mind that Christ had. We have the same mind. That's, that is mind-blowing in I know you haven't heard this emphasized nowhere. He's in you. He's in you. Start walking. I got him in me. Greater is he. That's where. Where is he? Where is he? In you. In you. Everything you need is in you. People you meet is another you. That could be. When you read characters in the Bible, that's you. That's us. We have because of the natural mind has the same ability, the same way Judas betrayed Christ. There's betrayal. That can, betrayal thoughts can come. Thoughts of jealousy. Uh, 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 thoughts to stop or block somebody from succeeding. Those are intrusive thoughts. You said, that's not my nature. That's not my, that's not my heart. Where's it coming from? Don't fight yourself. It's just in passing. It's just in passing. That's all it is. It said, it said I dropped something. It's in passing. D. Leonard Hughes Personal Development Institute Company. Coaching. I'm building a company. Listen, y'all. It's my desire. There's a there's a 190 countries. It's my desire to hit every country with thinking, with mind hacking, with Christ awareness, with mindset in the lowest countries. When you get that mind right, see you know, what, what is going on? And America does this. It keeps sending aid. It keeps sending aid to all those foreign countries. They can't be helped because you're giving them aid, but you're not doing nothing for here. They can't be helped. People in prison, they got out. A um, friend of mine, um, their cousin got out of prison and committed suicide the other day. You know why? Because they're not taught. The whole time they're locked up, it's pressing the bench, eating, dominoes, spades. I've been there, so I know. But when I went my mind was, I'm going to college. I made a mistake in my 20s. IRS, all of that. But can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? You're going to get through it. You're going to get through it. You got to go to work. This company is building. I put a lot in it during the week. I want to expand. I got to get my YouTube. I need y'all to go in and subscribe to D. Leonard Hughes Personal Development on YouTube <clears throat> because I got to get my YouTube uh, viewers up in order for me to do the stuff that I need to do. But can I tell you something? I need your help. If these teachings, if these teachings, what's the chance to say? Some, some with people who overeat, they got to change. Yeah, you're going to start me all over again, DeSanta. I'm trying to close. You, if you go on a diet, the Shanda, you got me going again. If you go on a diet and you don't have the right mindset, 
when you, you're going to die for two days and forget this, I'm going to pop out and get me some chicken and well, they don't do the rice and, you know, stuff. No more. Because you haven't the mindset. I was, I'm at 231 now. I was at 310. Stomach's gone. I look at myself now and I'm like, wow. Hey, hey, Daryl, how you doing? That's what I talk to myself. And sometimes I talk to myself as a second person. I say, Daryl, come on, come on, come on. You need to do better than that. You see what I'm saying? But I lost that weight because I put in my mind. Three, when I was three, ten, yo, you all, I'm trying to help you. The Santa, you got me going again. You've got problems in your health because of your eating habits. And when you're unhealthy, your mind, because all we're all connected. Our minds, our souls, which is our minds, our bodies, your subconscious control, your heart, it controls your breathing, and it controls your digestive system. So look at me. When all of that is blown up, y'all help me. You look at your ankles, your ankles this big, and you're still walking around. Your feet this big. And you're looking at yourself. So I'm tired of looking at myself like that. Well, bless God, do something about it. Can't hardly walk. I was 3'10". I couldn't walk three feet. I was huffing and puffing. My wife kept me. My mother stayed on me. You got to lose weight. You got to lose weight. I was going to have shoulder surgery. You going to have knee surgery. All of that. When I lost weight, canceled the surgery. I can walk. I can do a little run. You see? But what it was, was well, nothing really wrong. Your, what, your, your body, if your, your body is carrying all these weight on your skeleton system, and then it affects your organs, and then you find yourself running back and forth with the doctor, running back, and he ain't going to help you. He ain't going to tell you the truth because he want to keep your pharmaceutical companies. But if you change, your, last week I did seven um, day mental diet. Now change, we're not supposed to eat to fill ourselves up. You go and you just eat. I'm going back to the buffet. Plate, plate a mile high. Hey, Nita, plate a mile high. And you're, we're only supposed to eat for nutrients. That's it. We're not supposed to eat the stuff ourselves because really there's something going on in here and you're stuffing yourself. You're eating and you're getting all this weight and your, your legs are big, your, your, um, your um, ankles big, your feet big. You can't hardly walk. I saw a lady in the store today and I wanted to say, just, just change your diet. She was in the grocery store and she badly, uh, the Shannon said, my husband, getting ready. Yes, we don't just eat. You don't eat five pieces of chicken. You don't, you, you don't, you don't, you, you don't need all of that. Your thinking will change, help change when your diet change. I'm just trying to help you. I'm not trying to offend you, but if I got to offend you to get you healed, I just did. Change starting tonight. Usually, after 8 o'clock, I don't eat. And I only eat small portions. I ate today, small portion. I'm having to readjust my going to the grocery store. You see how the mind gets set on autopilot. So when I was big, when I was 310, I'm still shopping like I'm 310. Because I'm still having to work in my mind. So when I go to the grocery store, I'm getting better. My wife stays on me. When I go to the grocery store, I'm trying to buy groceries like when I had, I was 310 pounds. All of these things. See, get out of everybody else's life and get in your life. So I'm learning now. I used to, you know, I, I, I've been cooking like I was cooking when I was 310. And we end up putting food in the refrigerator and throwing away food because I'm, I'm, I'm working my mindset, but that old mindset is still on 310 pounds. And I'm 231. Much better life. 
I, they, they were getting ready to put me on the um, um, CPAC. CPAC, you know, for breathing at night. And I was, because my weight, your problem, your situation, your challenges is because of your weight. Your stomach, you don't even work on that. And your immune system is in your stomach. And you just broke it. And can I be real? When you go to the bathroom, you're not getting rid of everything. And what happens, all the other stuff just stays. It sticks, sticks to your stomach, sticks here. And before you know it, it sticks and it develops and there's cancer. Come on. And you're trying to figure out why well, I can't get it together. Because you're not into your life. You're not in here. You just eat. You just eat certain things. I don't, I don't do no candy. I don't do no chocolate. I was, I was in the store today. I love Milky Ways and, and uh, Carmella bars. And I wasn't even thinking about, you know, they have everything set up. What are you thinking about that? Auto pilot. Look, there's a Carmella bar right next to the Milky Way. I said, no, you don't eat that. And you're not going to get that, Daryl. See, that's the regenerated part of me talking to the natural part of me. You have to separate those two sometimes in order to get in what you need to get into. Sandra, you got me. Oh, that's right. Autopilot. When you get up in the morning, you're on autopilot. You, that's why I text people. I do a morning man every morning. And I tell people, take charge of your day. Because if you don't, your mind's going to control you and you're going to be everywhere. You'll have all kinds of problems going on. Okay. What I was saying, I need, I need you to support and donate to the teachings, to the Institute of what we're trying to do. Uh, those today, and I don't do this too much, um, but those tonight that would like to, hold on, those that would like to sow um, even on, even on cash out, um, I don't, I don't like doing it because everybody's on. Everybody's for their birthday. And why do people put the cash out, y'all? For their birthday. I'm trying to stay out of that. You don't have to beg nobody or solicit nobody to give you anything for your birthday. It's my birthday. Here's my cash out. I don't even know you. Hello, somebody. I don't know. I wonder why people do that. If you want to do it, you do it. But if somebody want to give you something or send you something on your birthday, let them do it. Don't solicit. Okay. I need y'all to help me. Those that can stand with me with $25 on tonight or more, if you feel led to give more, take your camera on your phone, put it on that QR code, and it gets directly into me. Go directly to me. Um, if you want to if you want to do Zelle, there's the information on Zelle there. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for those that are sewing, well, donations, sewing at $25 on tonight that have enjoyed the Institute. Okay. I'm getting ready to go. I'll leave that up for just a few minutes. It's been a wonderful experience. A wonderful, trying to keep my wonderful experience. I hope you wrote stuff down. Take it in, apply it. When I get off the when I get off the this line, intrusive thoughts. And while I'm on, you've had some intrusive thoughts. Yeah. Don't tell me no. Yeah. Sometimes it's in the back door. It's in the back room trying to make its way to the front. And then once it makes its way to the front, it controls you. See, it's not what happens in life, it's how you react and how you respond. Can I say it again? It's not what happens in life. It's your reactions and your response to life. Okay? I always try to help you. Again, we're building a company. It's not a religious. It's not a church. It's a Christ awareness. But it's personal development. To help people, you got to develop yourself. Nobody can develop you. You can't raise nobody, no grown person. You can't get married thinking you're going to raise somebody. Okay, Dale Hughes here said, thank you. Thank you for watching. 
And thank you for, I thank you for even listening. I appreciate you for even listening. Um, it's all good. As they say, it's all good. Uh, what I want to do is, um, and yeah, I'm going to leave this up for a little while, for about a minute. So those that want to uh, donate to Dylan and Hughes Personal Development Institute, we're building an institute. We want to cover 190 countries in mindset. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. See you next week. Peace.